And now with the Mets, oh my God, how did you guys choke so bad? After the first game, I had confidence that you guys were actually going to be doing good this year. Edwin Diaz looked really good. How did this happen? You guys never start off this bad. You guys always start off as one of the better teams in baseball. You start you usually start off the way the Miami Marlins are starting off right now. Yet now it's kind of like <laughs> your team's imploding. You guys lost Marcus Stroman, you lost Joanna Cespedes. Edwin Diaz still sucks. Everyone in your rotation but Jacob DeGrom sucks. And when Jacob DeGrom is on the mound, you guys give him zero run support. Pete Alonso does not look good so far. Everything's just sort of imploding in Queens right now. And it's... I'm not going to say it's funny. Because I do want the Mets to succeed. I feel like the... I feel like baseball is better when both teams when both teams in New York are doing good. So I'm not going to say it's funny. But it's just the same thing every year. Like this year, but this year it's worse cuz it's accelerated. Like you guys usually start off good 30 games in. Yes, 30 games in are like 20 and 10 or like 22 and 8, something like that. And then you guys go on like a 15 game losing streak. And then you implode. Right now, you guys just started off as imploded. Which, in some ways, if you look at the pattern, maybe this is a good thing for you guys. You guys never start off this terrible. Maybe starting off terrible is what you need. And now, in the middle of the season, you guys won't implode. You guys will continue to do good. And then later on in the season, we'll see what happens. But just remember, the Washington Nationals started off 19-31 and 31 and won the World Series. So it's not impossible for New York to do it. But losing Noah Syndergaard and Marcus Stroman before they pitched once, it's not good. Dylan Batance is not looking good. Not good. Edwin Diaz being last year's Edwin Diaz, not good. Pete Alonso, not being last year's Pete Alonso, not good. This team has, to, you guys have to step it up soon though, because you guys are already almost a fifth of, you guys are almost 20% through this season already. So you guys got to get your act together before this thing starts to blow up in your face. Because right now, you guys traded away Anthony K for um, half a year of Marcus Stroman. Since he's not coming back. You guys are also making bad trades, which is not going to help this rebuild process that you guys have to do. So, if this thing doesn't turn around, like best case scenario would... Best case scenario is, like I said before, you guys start off slow and then end hot and make the playoffs. But if that unlikely scenario doesn't happen, you guys are going to have to think about trading some of these pitchers or one of the two pitchers. I know you don't want to get rid of DeGrom in the worst way, but it's going to be thought about. Because this team, the way it's constructed, it's just not good. It's just not working. And this is the second year in a row. I know this is a really weird season, so you might not count this as a season. But, all right, let's just take this season off the table then. You know what? Yeah, that's right. Take this season off the table. If next year, 2021, when we expect to have a full season, if you guys have the same Result. DeGrom is gone. You guys have to find a way to get him some prospects. Turn him into some prospects. And maybe even Noah Syndergaard too. You guys have to figure out how to get either one of the two or both into prospects. Because 
this team is not working out. The Edwin Diaz trade sucks. You guys got Robinson Cano out of it, and Robinson Cano is, has not been the Robinson Cano we know since he played for my Yankees. So you got Robinson Cano and Edwin Diaz for prospects. I think Jared Kelenic was a part of that trade. Yes, yeah, so you guys traded a top prospect, Jared Kelenic, for a 5 ERA out of the bullpen and low 200 batting average, low OPS at second base. You guys have a good future with McNeil and Alonzo. I know Alonzo's not playing the best right now, but Judge also didn't play the best in his in his MVP season. He did not play the best in the second half. I'm taking this season. I'm taking this season as Pete Alonzo's second half of the season, so to speak, in comparison. So you guys have a bright future with those two. Michael Conforto's good. You guys found some. You you guys found J.D. Davis. He's good. Ahmed Rosario is good. This team looks really good on paper. It's just not working. Making those trades was a big power move by Brody, but everything's starting to really just implode in Brody's face. kind of it's kind of like the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result that's why I'm saying if you want to make this year a wash make this year a wash you guys might not be good the whole year and that might be fine because this is a weird circumstance that no one expected but if next year you guys are under 500 and you don't make the playoffs. One of those pitchers has to go. They are your only your they're your only stable variable. They're the only they're the only thing that hasn't been varied is that is that those two pitchers have been there the entire time. Now the now DeGrom is one of the best pitchers in baseball. You're not going to want to get rid of him. I get that. But at some point you're going to have to think about it. Because of the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You guys have had one stable variable throughout this entire thing. Which is Jacob deGrom and Noah Syndergaard. If you want this team to at some point be back in World Series contention like in 2015... One of those two have to go. Now, you guys would probably rather Syndergaard. But if you want a good rebuild, knowing that Noah Syndergaard is injury prone, you are not going to get too many good prospects for Noah Syndergaard. Unless a team is desperate, which you could definitely find. I still, even though Brody has made some bad trades... I still think Brody can try and finagle his way into turning Noah Syndergaard into a couple good prospects. But if he does not, and Noah Syndergaard is just sitting there as an injury-prone pitcher, you're going to have to shop at least... at least test the market on what Noah Syndergaard would bring in. Or Jacob DeGrom. What Jacob DeGrom would bring in. And I know a lot of people are going to say, no, that's dumb. You would want them to stay for the rebuild so that you have something there. It just hasn't worked. You guys have tried to keep these two together. You guys have tried to keep this pitching staff together. You guys aren't getting anyone else in this pitching staff to pitch. And Jacob DeGrom is not resulting into wins because your team can't hit when he's on the mound. It's not working. 
at some point you're going to have to, this team is going to have to give up on them if they want to win a championship in the next five to six years. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that. But the Mets are not the Mets are not in a good position right now. They have a lot of talent and it's not it's just not meshing. So what are you guys going to so if you don't trade DeGrom or Syndergaard, would you want to trade McNeil? Probably not. They're, he's a part of the rebuild. Would you want to trade Pete Alonso? Probably not. You would get a lot of value for those two. Jeff McNeil is a very good bat all around. I think he's a better bat overall than Pete Alonso. Because at times, Jeff McNeil has the power to hit one out. But he also hits for a high average. And I know batting average doesn't mean everything nowadays. Everyone's calling that an overrated stat. It's still an important stat. It still tells you how many times a guy's getting a base hit. And base hits are still important. It's not all about the home run ball. And I know that's weird coming from a Yankee fan, but like, it's not all about the home run ball. He is getting on base. He's getting on base, and he's getting base hits. He's able, he's able to get a base hit at will and then have the power sometimes to jack one out. Pete Alonso right now is a lot of what Aaron Judge was for the second half of the rookie season. It was sort of home run or bust. If, but right now Aaron Judge has worked his way to having over an 1,100 OPS And yes, he still does hit a lot of home runs, but he does get a lot of base hits. And he likes to work a very high count. And he does strike out a lot. But he does get on base. That's something you can't can't dispute. He gets on base a lot. And so, Pete Alonso just doesn't have that yet. Pete Alonso right now is still home run or bust. Or extra base hit or bust. He doesn't hit for a high average. He does not have a great OPS. It's Right now, it's got to... So, you guys have a bright future with those two. Would you want to get rid of either of them? I really want to hear that from a Mets fan. Would you want to get rid of McNeil or Alonzo, who are going to help you offensively too, or would you rather get rid of a cinder guard or maybe even a DeGrom? I really want to hear that because now that I'm thinking about it, one of them has to go. If you're trying to get a real good rebuild, one of them has to go. One has been on the team for over five years, or one pair has been on the team for over five years, and one pair is a part of the future. I would think you would want to get rid of the guys who were here for five, six years and were never able to work it out. DeGrom is amazing. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say he hasn't worked out issues in his game. He is the best pitcher in baseball. And you might not want to get rid of that guy. But it it has to happen. It really does.